You're so excited to start traveling again in 2021, but you've heard there's a ton of changes with the airlines and airports. Well, today I'm gonna to give you some tips to help you navigate through the new reality of traveling in 2021. Hey y'all, it's Christy the Gen X Gypsy and welcome to my channel. Since I just got back from my trip from Alaska and had to navigate the airports and airlines myself, I thought I would share with you some tips that could make your travel life easier in 2021, especially if you're planning to fly anywhere. We're going to start off with purchasing your tickets. We all want a really good deal when we buy a plane ticket. Unfortunately, I think our low prices on plane tickets will not be seen again for quite a while. One of the reasons for this is that business travelers are usually subsidizing the prices of tickets for the rest of us who are traveling for vacation. And there just isn't a lot of business travel happening right now. That being said, there are some ways to still try to find some more reasonably priced plane tickets. I would still encourage you to use websites like Kayak and Expedia and Google Flights in order to find the cheapest flights that are out there. But then once you find that price that works for you, I would go directly to the airline and book the ticket there. The reason for this is that if you book the ticket directly with the airline, you have a 24 hour cancellation period, regardless of which airline it is. That 24 hour cancellation period just gives you some peace of mind a little bit more time to look through and see if there's better tickets out there and to just really make sure you're committing to that trip. It's nice to have that 24 hour cancellation with no penalty. Now that gets us to the point of the changes that the airlines made on their change fees during the pandemic. If you had not purchased your tickets, prior to April 30th and I think May 30th for a couple of the airlines, those free change fees have gone away. They all expired at that time. So if you are currently purchasing tickets, you will no longer have free change fees. And in fact, if you buy those super cheap <laughs> economy fares, they're not allowing any cancellations or changes at all, not even for a fee. So you want to keep that in mind when you are looking at those really cheap fares. Be sure to read the fine print because each airline has different requirements and regulations on those super cheap fares. Sometimes they're just not worth it. My second tip is to make sure you are flexible with the dates you are flying. It's long been known that Tuesdays and Wednesdays are the cheapest days to fly, especially in the United States. However, it definitely varies depending on the location that you're going to. I would highly encourage you to use the tables that the airlines now provide that show the different days and what the prices of the tickets are for those days. And use that to help you make your decision before purchasing your ticket. I do it all the time and I have definitely saved myself 100 to 200 to sometimes $300 purchasing tickets by just changing my days by one or two days before or one or two days after. I was originally planning on going. Tip number three, once you've booked your tickets, download that airlines app. It is so convenient for a number of different reasons. You can check in through the app. You can have your boarding passes on the app, which allows you a more hands-free experience in the airport. You can change your seats beforehand. You can order food beforehand. They generally have uh, airport maps, so you'll know where you're going. It'll tell you when you land which baggage claim your baggage is going to be at. It'll let you know if there's been any gate changes. I just, I hesitated for a long time. I didn't want more stuff on my phone, so I was kind of like, eh, I don't need to put the app on. I cannot tell you how much time it has saved me having the app on my phone and being able to know before I even get off the plane which gate I need to go to and where it is in the airport. So if I have to run to it, I know exactly where I am going. And that leads us to tip number four. Download a picture of the map 
for the airport where you are going to have a layover. You will probably be able to access it on your airline app, but just in case there's a reason that your Wi-Fi isn't working or you're not getting internet service on your phone, it's nice to have it as a picture so that you can look it up. And if your flight is delayed or they've changed gates and you need to know where you have to get to and how fast you need to get there, then having that airport map can be a lifesaver or at least to save you from missing your flight. Tip number five, when you are booking your tickets, make sure to choose your seats wisely. Now, sometimes you're not able to choose your seats immediately upon booking your ticket, but when you are given the capability of choosing your seats, make sure that you do a little research and try to find what are the best seats on that particular airplane. There is an app out there called Seat Guru, and I will link that below, that will help you find out what are the best seats on that flight just by putting in your flight number and what cities you are flying between. It's pretty handy. I also did a video about how not to get sick when traveling. And one of the things I learned when doing the research for that video is that they did do a study on which seats you are less likely to get a virus or a cold from. And I thought it was no surprise that they found out that window seats are the healthiest seats on the plane. So if you don't mind being stuck inside at a window seat, it's probably gonna be your least likely spot to get sick. But I would highly encourage you to check out seatguro.com as well, just to make sure you're getting a damn good seat. <laughs> My sixth tip is if you are planning to go fully carry on, and you're taking your two bags with you, make sure that one of those bags has everything that you want to have in it on the airplane. It's highly likely that they are going to ask you to check one of your bags when you get to the gate. The airlines are going to take a while to get their service back up to the level that it was at before, which means most flights are going to be overbooked and crowded for the time being. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully by this fall, they will be adding more flights and they'll have more people back to work. But for now, just count on having to check one of your bags at the gate. So instead of me getting there and having to pull stuff out and move it around to one bag or the other bag, have one of your bags that you know you will have on the plane with you. And then the other one, you can just hand off at the gate and pick it up when you get wherever you're going. I personally like doing that. I usually pack with that expectation in my head for years I've done that because I don't want to have to pay the 25 or 30 dollars for my baggage but I know that they're going to ask for people to volunteer to check bags. Then when I get to my layover I'm not having to deal with another bag. I just have my carry-on and I'm, I'm good getting my second bag when I get to my destination. And my last tip is to bring your own food. The three airports that I went through just a couple of weeks ago, half the restaurants were still closed because they don't have enough employees to work in those restaurants. And when you go into the newsstands to buy ugh, the crappy food that's in the newsstands, no offense, Hudson News, but it's not all that healthy for you and it's filled with sodium and, you know, I could go off on a tangent on that. But a lot of the food in there is past their expiration dates too. So not only is it not great for you, but it's also kind of stale. Ugh. I would plan on bringing at least some snack stuff for yourself that you like because you're also not getting food on the plane. I don't know when they're going to start doing full service again. I know that they will allow you to pre-order some snacks on the plane. So that is also another option that you can do. But for now, if you don't wanna be starving by the time you get to your destination, I'd at least put a couple of granola bars or cliff bars and whatever bars you like to eat to make sure you don't go hungry. Cause there's nothing worse than getting to your destination and just being hangry and then not being able to find any place to eat. I, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one who's kind of food centric, but that's, that's definitely one of my big tips for this year. 
But I do have one last thing that is a new app, or at least it's new to me, that I found out about watching Kat Nesbitt, who is a flight attendant, was talking about this app. It's called Flight Aware, and I'll link that below, that tells you where your plane is at any given time. So before you leave for the airport, you can check the app and see where your plane is coming from, if it's been delayed out of the place that it's coming from, or if there have been any other issues with it. It's just kind of a nice secondary way to check on your flight before you ever even get to the airport and kind of have a heads up if there's gonna be any issues. So that's all my tips for today. I hope you've gotten something out of this. I'd love to hear if you have some new travel tips for 2021 or any new travel apps that we might want to try out. Have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.